Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Diana. This is my channel Bookish Die, and today I am talking about the top five series that I would love to see adapted for TV or movies with one honorable mention. So I decided to do this video because there have been a lot of books and series being optioned for TV and film. So recently the Sean McGuire series Wayward Children was announced by Paramount. We have Octavia Butler's a fledgling and Parable of the Sour. We have the Wheel of Time series that's coming out in November, I believe. Anyway, so that's a really great time to be a fan of books and to see it adapted on the big screen. And I apologize if you can hear my cat uh, eating in the background. Uh, they've decided that I'm recording and now is the time to be loud. Anyway, so I decided that it would be fun to talk about some books that I personally would love to see adapted uh, for TV or film. Uh, so some brief guidelines for what I chose. I purposely went with works that, as far as I'm aware, have not been optioned or are in development. So that means, like, while I would love to see October Day finally on my television screen, it has been optioned by Kung Fu Monkey, uh, the same production company that does Leverage, which is why I know that. Um, so that's why I'm not including that. That's why uh, Broken Earth isn't on there. That's why the Tortal books aren't on there as well. So again, these are my top five uh, series slash books that I personally would love to see uh, in visual media of some sort. So the first one that I would, uh, I would go out, I would be so excited if it actually got adapted is Tamara Pierce's Circle of Magic series. So this is her other secondary world fantasy series. It follows for uh, kids, Sandry, Trish, Tris, Daja, and Briar, all of whom uh, are found by this man, Nicolai, Nico Goldeneye and are brought to this temple called Winding Circle to be instructed. And all of them believe that they don't have magic, but surprise, they do. And through the course of the series, they become a found family, learn the extent of their powers, and have to deal with a variety of natural disasters uh, along the way. So I adore this series so much. I I th While I do love the Tortal series, I think the Emelon books, which is the place where these books take place, really have a special place in my heart. I adore the found family aspect between the four kids. I really like the adults in this series as well. Once they get to the temple, their teachers are all really great. And I think this would make a very good animated adaptation. So each book covers a series of events. It all takes place within a year, but I think there's room for kind of like slice of life episodes. And I think the way that these books are written would work really well in an animated uh, series. So similar to like maybe Shira or Keep on the Wonder Beast, I think that that would work very well for illustrating the power that these kids have and I think there are certain scenes that would work really well animated versus live action so in the first book for example um Sandry's book the kids are all meditating in the tower and they each visualize our meditation in a different way and I think something like that would just look so amazing as an animated series compared to live action I also think that they could do the sequel series the circle opens um as well but this one in particular I would adore seeing I think that the characters the setting all would work really well for a tv series and yeah I I would I would love to see my kids on my tv screen in some way shape or form so the second series that I would love to see adapted is N.K. Jemisin's Dream Blood Duology. This is her second published series, although I think, yeah, Killing Blood was actually one of the first books that she wrote. Um, so it's set in this nation called Gujara, and it follows a series of priests who harvest dreams, and they help heal people, they can also kill the corrupt, and during the course of the first book, The Killing Moon, um, one of the priests, Ahiru, discovers corruption and he and his apprentice 
as well as uh, an ambassador from a neighboring country are drawn into this. And the events of the first book directly lead to the events of the second book and, and how the country has changed what's going on. And yeah, I, I really love these books and I think this would be very good for like a big screen adaptation. I think the visuals in this book, so this is set on a world where there are like different moons. There's like a gas planet that, um, the planet that this is orbiting around uh, is in the sky. And I think the visuals alone would make for an absolutely stunning movie. I also think that the characters are very interesting. And I think the magic system could, it could be very kind of trippy, especially when it comes to the dreams. And I know N.K. Jemisin already has some of her works optioned, but I think this in particular could be a fantastic like secondary world fantasy series, majority cast people of color, um, particularly black people. I think that it would be something very different than what we've seen on screen when it comes to fantasy movies, because it's not your typical sword and sorcery fantasy movie or fantasy series. And yeah, this would, again, be something I would absolutely love to see. I think, again, the way that it's written would translate very well visually. And I mean, we're already getting some N.K. Jemisin adaptations. What's another? Third on things I'd love to see adapted are, and sorry, these are very chunky books, uh, Kate Elliott's Spirit Walker trilogy. So this is like a steampunk alternate history that follows a young woman named Kat Hasi Barahal, who um, with her cousin gets drawn into nation spanning political shenanigans. So in this world, the Roman Empire never fell and the Phoenicians were never conquered. Um, and so the entire backstory is completely different for this world. Uh, they're just like, a lot there's just like a lot of traffic today I don't know what's going on anyway so in this world in addition to the fact the Roman Empire never fell there was also this uh, outbreak of salt ghoul plague in West Africa and what historically was the Mali Empire and so you have this exodus of refugees from West Africa into Europe and there's also uh, intelligent descendants of dinosaurs there's cold magic there's a uh, sheep shifting uh cat there like aside from our main character cat um there's very handsome well-dressed man who even though he might be a little too old for it now i've always fan cast as aldous hodge um there's romance there's adventure and i think this would work very very well for like a three season epic fantasy tv series so something similar to what hbo did with his Dark Material series. It could be something on Netflix similar to Shadow and Bone or The Witcher. I think that again, and I know I'm talking about the visuals, but I think that's very important when considering uh, things that are being adapted. I think the visuals in this series would be fantastic. I think the story, again, is something very different than what we've seen. This isn't your typical epic fantasy. This is uh, alternate history in like the truest sense where there are multiple divergent points. So it's not just um, Victoriana, but superpowers or steamships. Like there are multiple points of difference uh, from our world and this world. And I think that would be really refreshing to see. I love, love, love Kat as a main character. She's very headstrong. Uh, she's stubborn. She's loyal. She's funny. Her cousin Beatrice and her relationship with Beatrice is great. I love me a good uh, female relationship. I, again, <laughs> mentioned Eldis Hodge as the male lead. And again, I think that would be perfect. Uh, so yeah, this would be such a fun series to see on TV. This, I need to do a reread. It's been a while since I've reread them, but this is one of my absolute favorite fantasy series. I think that Kate Elliott did such a good job writing this. And yeah, this again, I think would be something that hasn't really been seen before with our adaptations and just could be a lot of fun and be something I think a lot of people would enjoy. 
Next is not a series that I would like to see adapted, but a novella, and that is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This is a horror novella set in the 1920s, and it follows a group of African-American women who are fighting monsters called Ku Kluxes who feed off of hate. And they are seeing a revival based on the release of A Birth of a Nation. And the this novella centers Maurice and her crew who are trying to stop a showing of Birth of a Nation at Stone Mountain. And this is such a good book. This is honestly one of my top books that I've read this year. And again, this is something I think that would work very, very well as a movie adaptation. Uh, P. Jolly Clark just has this amazing language. I think this has similar vibes to Lovecraft Country, but it's a different story. And I think because it's a novella, it could easily be contained in a movie. I think that a lot of what's in here would translate very, very well to a horror movie. And I'm not really a horror person, but I think this would work very well. I think that um, the flashbacks we get to Maurice's backstory, as well as the aunties that she communes with who give her her special sword. It could just work so, so well on the big screen. And um, I think this would just be so much fun as well. I know horror has been kind of been seeing a revival. Like I said, I'm not a horror person, but I have some friends who are. And I think this would work very well in the current uh, field of movies being released. And again, I think this would fill the hole left uh, by the cancellation of Lovecraft Country. Like, like I said, similar but very different. And yeah, I just, I love this book. I think it would work, or novella, I think it would just work so well as a, as a horror adaptation. And please get on this. So the last of my top five that I would love to see adapted is the Heroin Complex series by Sarah Kuhn. This is a contemporary fantasy series set in San Francisco where a demon portal opened, leaving behind demons and people with powers. And it follows three of our main characters, Evie and B. Tanaka, as well as Veda Jupiter, aka Annie Chang, and it deals with their relationships, both with each other and with the people around them. It deals with the uh, demon invasion, it deals with uh, growing up, and I think this will work so well as a long-running TV series. This is on a, this is one of my favorite ongoing fantasy series. I really adore the different characters and the relationships with each other. I think that uh, Sarah Kuhn does a very good job with consistent character growth across the different books. So each book has a different narrator. So Evie narrates the first one, Heroin Complex. Uh, Aveda slash Annie narrates uh, Heroin Worship. And B uh, narrates heroin journey and then Evie's back for haunted heroin and I think again the reason this would work well as a tv series compared to a movie like an ongoing tv series is that while there's this overarching like each book has its own self-contained story I think there's room for kind of monster of the week episodes that lead into uh the finale which would be you know the climax of these books I think that the characters are really fun and it'd be really great to see uh, this uh, sisterhood of Asian American characters. I think that the romance as well would work very well for a TV series, especially if it's like more slow burn aspect. Um, I also think that they could really lean into the humor inherent in this series on a TV show. Like the first book, the first battle is dealing with demon cupcakes. Like they're, the series is just so much fun. And I think as well, we've seen that with the CW shows that superheroes work very well on TV and longer form storytelling. So that's another reason why I think this would work so well for TV uh, compared to a movie. Um, yeah, this, I would be over the moon to see something like this. I think if it was done with the same kind of care that the librarians had, I know that's not a superhero show, but I like, I get similar vibes in terms of like what I would want to see or 
um, kind of legends of tomorrow the one thing I would want for this is to make sure that it's not grim and dark because that's not this these books like there are serious moments in these books and the characters do undergo a lot of character growth a lot of um, introspection and some darker moments but the at the heart this is a very fun and joyful series and I would hope any adaptation would reflect that component. The honorable mention that I have is the uh, Irene Adler series by Carol Nelson Douglas. This is a historical mystery series centered on Irene Adler, aka that or the woman who bested Sherlock Holmes in the original series. And this series follows Irene and her companion Penelope, aka Nell as they make their way through Victorian London and deal with a variety of mysteries as well. So the first book in the series is Good Night Mr. Holmes and it follows Irene and Nell from their meeting to the end of A Scandal in Bohemia and I really enjoy these books. It kind of ignited my love of Irene Adler and made it so that I judge any Holmes adaptation on how mostly poorly they handle Irene. The only adaptation where I've really enjoyed how they've handled Irene is Elementary. Um, but even that wasn't like a pure adaptation of who she is in the original story. But anyway, I love these series. But the reason this is an honorable mention is I think if these do get adapted, there would need to be a lot of care taken, it, particularly how they handle the Roma characters. So while I love these books, the first book as well as some of the later books have some really unfortunate Roma stereotypes. And I would be worried that if this were be would if this series were to be adapted, that they would leave them as is or make it worse. So while I would really like to see some form of the series on TV, it is a concern of mine. So that's why it's my honorable mention and not my top five because I, I'm i not as, ex I would not be as excited to see news of it getting optioned as I would with any of the other five books and series that I mentioned earlier. So those are my top five books and series plus one honorable mention that I would love to see adapted. Uh, do, you, do you know any of these? If you do would you be excited to see if any of these got adapted are there any dream uh, book or series adaptations that you also would love to see please let me know in the comments below and if you like what you see please like and subscribe thank you all so much for watching and i will talk with you next time bye